Hi, and welcome today. I have an amazing guest who is also my personal friend, Marlene Davenport. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you for having me here, Renee. So Marlene is originally from Ecuador, and she, when she was in Ecuador, she got her doctorate in biochemistry and pharmacy, correct? Yes. She went to the University Cuenca. 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 Okay, thank you. Correcting my Spanish there. I broke. She owned, um, she actually owned pharmacies for 15 years in Ecuador. And it, it was a chain of pharmacies that you had, and you had nine of them. Yes. So you've had a lot of experience in dispensing pharmaceutical drugs. Mm. Yes, and um, man maintaining relationships with the pharmaceutical laboratory, you know, with the people in the pharmaceutical labor laboratories, which medical visitors, doctors, patients, and so on. So you've had a lot of interaction on both sides of the counter, so to speak, as we would say, you know, yes. from telling the doctor. So you're going to bring a great value to our audience. And I'm so excited about this because you came to the United States and you've been a practicing pharmacist ever since, but you're also a health and life coach. And your primary focus is young adults. And what you do is you're working, you love to work with adults that are struggling with anxiety and stress. And you said, I quote, so they can become joyful and successful. Yes. That's, that's where your heart is. Yeah. Our natural state is to be happy. Yes. And that's, and that's where you want to bring these young people. And that's what brings you here today is because, you know, we're talking to parents of teenagers and, and in my coaching practice, and maybe you've noticed in yours, there's a lot of teens who are on prescription drugs. And so I think it's important to inform parents about um, just health, health issues with drugs and um, just some precautionary things, how they can empower themselves and anything that has to do with prescription drugs in their teens, because there's so much more there a lot of times in what we see in our three minutes with the doctor in his office. So, and you are one that really knows all uh, so much information. So I'm going to just start by asking you some questions. And these are questions that I'm very curious about. So I'm sure that our audience will be curious about as well. What are the common drugs that you see prescribed for teenagers? Oh, you know, regular cold, which is okay. Um, but what uh, has made me concerned about is the antidepressant, anxiety, anti-anxiety medications that uh, more or less, I think that, and you as a health and life coach know that it is a lot that we can do, do before starting a medication. Um, as a pharmacist and a health and life coach, I definitely think that kids want to try holistic approaches like lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. You know, what, you know, how um, our gut is related to our brain. So uh, central nervous uh, diseases start because we don't have healthy habits. We, you know, kids spend a long time on technology and um, they don't have social interaction with peers and relatives, even with the parents. You know, they live isolated with technology. And then, of course, sooner or later, they, we are humans. We need that contact and then we get depressed. Uh, and yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, some uh, parents uh, take the easiest step, which is take to the take the to the doctor, and the, without finding the root of the problem, kids start on medication, and it is okay, you know, if a kid needs a medication, it is okay. But how are we helping the kid? 
because the medication by itself is not going to cure the kid. Mm. Okay? But if we use medication plus lifestyle changes, then it will be a huge difference. And um, because what happens in, and I have seen many patients, you know, the patient goes to the doctor in, with anxiety or depression and the, the doctor prescribes the medication. But the teenager continues with the same uh, habits, mm -hmm. you know, eating fast food, no communication skills, uh, etc. Like uh, I already mentioned to you. And then it doesn't work. The medication doesn't work by itself. So then the patient goes back to the doctor three months later, oh, doctor, it's not working for me. Then the doctor says, oh, maybe we need to increase the dose or maybe mm. we need to change to another antidepressant. And, and that's why I want to alert the parents. You know, if we are medicating our ch children, it is okay. You know, the doctor, the psychiatrist, um, you know, run tests to prescribe a, a teenager. But... What are we doing along with the medication? What, how are we helping our kids uh, with lifestyle changes? So anyway, I'm sorry I went. No, no. and I've noticed, I wanted to ask you some follow-up questions about that if I can. Is I've noticed that, that there seems to be more and more of a, of a trend, and you, and you really would, if you're if noticing more and more young people on these medications? Yes, mm -hmm. actually, as you mentioned before, I am from Ecuador and uh, you know, anxiety medications for teenagers never in, in my country. And mm -hmm. um, so I was shocked when I came to the United States, I was shocked about how many antidepressants and um, anxiety medications are kids on. I don't know, maybe the world has changed in, you know, the millennium kids and, you know, maybe in Ecuador is the same. Actually, I, I haven't uh, researched enough in Ecuador how it, it is going. I, I understand it would be like the same tendency, but uh, when I came here, I was shocked for about how many medications kids need and, uh, and what is the follow-up exercising and, um, helping really helping kids to to I mean, become happy and, and joyful and successful and not depending only on the medication but on other changes in their life absolutely and have you noticed that kids are 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 these teenagers what percentage would you say are more than on more than one prescription drug oh is that that that, that is the that is Another thing that, that um, hurts me, hurts my heart. Mm -hmm. and I'm talking mm -hmm. to you from my heart. Mm -hmm. When I see, okay, an antidepressant medication, then the doctor changes to another medication or increases the dose. So then the kid cannot, because they expect, many patients and parents expect that, okay, the doctor will give me the medication and my kid will be perfect. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't happen that way. So the when you don't see your expectation that becomes true, then you get more depressed. You know, uh, no, it's not helping. And, and so my life is a mess. And what am I going to do? There are so many things that that, that we can do to help kids. Um, however, they get desperate because they put all the expectations on one pill mm. because the, the, the pill fixes everything and that is not true. So actually, um, I'm sorry, I, I forgot the question. So, so how many, how many kids, I mean, are, are how many, what percentage do you think of the teens that you see coming in? How many of them are taking like two things or three Usually. things? Uh, unfortunately, when a kid starts early age to take medication, I have seen a nine-year-old patient on 10 medications. <gasps> that is okay. shocking. Can you, can you say that again? Just yeah, so people I have get seen that. a nine-year-old patient on 10 medications. On 10 medications, nine years old. Yes. Wow. That's, that's hard for me to, 
stomach. <laughs> and we know, we see that in adults, but I didn't realize that, that there were actual yeah, children. For example, a child can take uh, an uh, other out for, sometimes they take two. You, I can see two kids, nine-year-old taking two, um, you know, either other out or vivens or methylphenidate, you know, a mix of, of two of them. So there, there will be two. Then they take clonidine that helps also with ADHD. Then the kid can have some stomach problems because medications uh, affect the stomach, you know. In an early age, the, our natural state is to be healthy. So the body doesn't know how to metabolize in a young child medications, yeah, okay? So then the, the kid could be on something to stimulate his appetite because... Um, and then, of course, an, an antidepressant like Celexa, and uh, probably the antidepressant didn't work as well. So probably a Velafaxine or Lexapro, you know, like a mix. And something for constipation. And uh, so, yeah. And sleep. And something for sleep. So if we're looking at, um, a, say, a teenager, that the parents are concerned about with just different behavioral or emotional things or, and the parents are saying, you know, I need to take, I need to take them to the doctor, see if there's something going on here. Then if we looked at it from, I like to look at things from like morning to night, because <laughs> we like, you know, as, as coaches, we love working on uh, schedules that are fit into have, you know, habits that are fit into schedules. So you're looking at waking up, somebody might need to take medication to focus like focus before they go to school. And then they may need to take some kind of a, a antidepressant or an anxiety or both medications like to get them through school. And then they get home, but they haven't really eaten their lunch because the medicine makes them not hungry. So they may be taking something to stimulate their appetite. And then that may actually keep them awake at night. So they have to take something to sleep. And then you start all. Then you start all over again. And every medication has side effects. Okay. Could you could you give us an example of like like one medication that has a side effect and maybe another one that would contraindicate? Oh, I just I have something printed here, and I'm sorry. Let me see. Great. This. Sure. I, it is a medication that is not for depression. It is a medication to help um, for allergies. Oh, for allergies. Okay. Okay. Where is Anyway. Oh my gosh. What is it? So I remember one time we were talking about one of your clients because we are friends and um, this person was taking something and also a uh, birth control. This is a young, young adult. Yeah. I am, I am going to tell you, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did I interrupt you? I was looking. No, that's fine. That's what we do as coaches. We interrupt, right? And ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> so there is this medication that is for allergies. And, and um, you know, when people, uh, do, 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 uh, when people have difficulty reading with asthma or, or something. Mm -hmm. So this is this medication. So this medication by itself, and it's prescribed children four years old. And up. Okay. Agitation, including aggressive behavior or hostility, attention problems, bad or vivid dreams, depression, disorientation, feeling anxious, hallucination, memory problems, obsessive compulsive symptoms, restlessness, sleepwalking, fluttering, suicidal thoughts and actions, tremor, trouble sleeping and controlled muscle movements. And I'm not talking about, you know, like stimulants or so, it's, it's, it's a regular drug. So, so, so can, you share, can you share what that drug is called? What's it called? The, the brand name? Like sure. a brand name? The brand name is the, is the Singular. Singular. It's a, singular is a very popular drug. C-I-N-G-U-L-A-R. Yes. S-I-N-G-U-L-A-R. Singular. Yeah. Okay. So that's a drug where someone could, 
hey, my, I'm suffering from allergies or seasonal allergies or something. Is that what it's for? Or just a little it bit? Has, of You know, a little bit more than that, you know. Okay, okay. Also some more problems with the lungs, asthma, so the doctor. Okay, okay, uh, all right. But, but they could function. They, they, they can function in their life. It's not like something that, that is keeping them alive, right? I mean, it's like they can, they can function. So it's very popular, you say. Very popular. And so with that laundry list that you read, the, each of those things in and of itself is pretty significant side effect. I would say so. So, what, say so. what do parents need to do when they're going to their doctor, what are, like if you were taking your, your own teenager to a doctor, what would that appointment look like for you? Yeah, I would uh, check every side effect of the medications that my daughter is taking. You know, if it is life or death, I can, I have to take what I, you know, anything, it, you know, for acute situations. Yeah, we need to, but what are we going to do next? to avoid taking more medications, you know, to, to right. take the least medications that we need, that right. is lifestyle changes. So I am, uh, and I have always been, and I'm telling you, uh, I am a pharmacist and I take a couple of ibuprofen a month and that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I have always kept away from medications. I have been depressed a few times. Um, however, and I even, a psychiatrist prescribed me a medication for depression. And I, I said, I will try to do the other way first. And if it doesn't work, I will take the medication. Fortunately, it worked out and I did not need to take it. And I am so mm -hmm. glad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because when you understand the side effect of a medication, you want to take it only if it is really necessary. So where do, how do parents find out about the side effects? I mean, what literally do they do, they do to, to find out? Where is that information? Yeah, as pharmacists, when the patient goes to the pharmacy, we tell them about the side effects. But, you know, some patients take so many medications and we don't have, even they take medication from one pharmacy, from another pharmacy. We don't even know what they are taking there, if they are interacting with each other. You know, some, some patients take antibiotics here because it's cheaper. And from another pharmacy, the other medications because it is cheaper. So as a pharmacist, I don't know exactly what they are taking and what medications are interacting with each other. So, so that's why I would first, you know, if you go to Google, and you write, for example, you want to, to know the information, the clavix information. Uh, okay, that is for, a, for an adult. Usually kids don't, don't, are not on that. But other app, you know, you go to, okay. mm -hmm. to Google and you say other app FDA. FDA, okay. And then it will come, a, you know, a PDF with all the side effects. Of course, there are some, uh, how do you say, special terms that they won't understand, but mm -hmm. I think 60% or 70% of the information any person can understand. And so, so I was just thinking when you were saying this, that it could be really helpful for, for parents for themselves and also for their teenagers to keep a list of all the drugs they take. So yeah. if I had a list with me and I went to you as a pharmacist, and I'm picking up something, say for, I don't know, the flu or something, then I would say, I, I would need, it's best if I'm proactive and say, and show you the list and say, oh, you know what? I'm taking all of these things also. And then you could, you would know to advise me even further that, oh, I see you're taking this. What I'm about to give you can contraindicate with this, right? Or you might want to call your doctor before you take what I'm giving you because I see these other things you're taking. But so, so really it's incumbent upon the patient to empower themselves to be informed and they're going to get that information from you unless they're, but they also need to share with their doctor 
because they know the multiple doctors, right? And they're all prescribing all these different things. And you have no idea how many cases. Yeah, I have had patients that the doctor wrote a muscle relaxant, for example. Somebody got, uh, you know, pain in their back and the doctor wrote muscle relaxant, uh, steroid, blah, blah, blah. And then they go to another, it, it doesn't get um, fixed immediately. You know, everything needs a pro is a process. So then they go to another doctor. And the doctor again prescribes muscle relapsing with a different name. So then we have to be talking to the patient, you know, this is a duplication, you cannot take a bowl. But um, who knows, some patients try to take both, so maybe it will relieve the pain faster, you know, so. Well, yeah, patient, yeah. Um, and about like weaning off, that's something, because I know just, um, with my own daughter, it was so important when she had to be on medication at a certain time. And it's absolutely imperative that you work with the doctor in the event that you're wanting to wean yourself or someone in your family off a prescription drug, because there's so many things that can happen um, if you don't do that. So, I mean, I can't emphasize that enough that you've got to work alongside of your doctor with that, as well as knowing what, you know, understand what you're taking. If you're not wanting to take something, you absolutely don't want to cut cold turkey. You don't want to quit cold turkey. I mean, you've got to work with, work with your doctor for safety. So for parents, if parents are watching this and going, oh goodness, you know, I want to get my child off all this. Um, that's what we would want to tell them is to work with the doctor. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh the human being gets used to anything, right? So our brain, our body starts taking a medication. So depends on the medication to function in what anything. So if we cut immediately, that is not right. Yeah, it has to be done with the doctor. It's, it, there are some medications actually that you could um, stop but so many medications that you will hurt you badly if you stop suddenly. So you need definitely to, to, be, to, to be by the, by the side of the doctor to win off any medication. So, yeah. so I want to brag on you a little bit on, on how, you, how big your heart is for, your, for the customers that come to where you work, not only for young people working as a, as a health and a life coach, but also just in your life as a pharmacist, because you shared with me one time about um, a patient who there were some lots of medications called in and what you did. And you, you went above and beyond what you really had to do, quite honestly. So I wanted to acknowledge you for that. And maybe you could just tell us really briefly that story. I think you know what I'm talking about. No, um, you know, it, as a pharmacist, it is in my company, it is, a, it is our duty to, to, to look for the safety of the patient. So, yeah, this, there is this time that um, I received 25 prescriptions for a patient and um, it was too much to me. So I, I, I called the doctor, uh, it were, they were sent electronically, and I called the doctor and said, uh, is this right? Or maybe there is some duplications here. And yeah, the, the, I don't, you know, I, I did not work the following day in the pharmacy, but I don't know actually what happened with that. But um, the, the, the nurse told me that uh, to wait, the doctor wants to, to check everything again, and uh, they will talk to us the following day. Uh, so you, so you actually stopped that person from potentially taking medication that they didn't need to take, maybe some duplications or something like that. Yeah, you know, so it could be because even the computer sometimes can make mistakes. Okay. And so I needed to be fully sure that, that the patient actually right. needed all the right. medications. And the doctor was very yeah, agreeable and, and he, you know, it was like 4.30, something like that, that, that I was, I, I contacted him and they said, okay, so tomorrow we will look everything for her. And so it, it, it was good. I, I liked it. Yeah. So uh, just to kind of wrap up here, what, 
what is one thing that you would advise a parent to do now whose son or daughter, teenage son or daughter is on medication to be uh, more proactive? What is like an action step you would have them do for their son or daughter, like right now, something they, they, could, they could take with them? You know, I would like them to be informed. Uh, every time we sell a medication, especially the ones that have bad side effects, we always send with, a, with something like this, you know, a PDF to the information. And I have asked many of my friends, acquaintances, because I'm curious, you know, and I said, have, do you read the information that comes with your prescription? I think 2% read. The other people don't read. Yeah. So they don't know what they are putting in their body, you know. And, um, but this is not complete information. They are going to find more complete information on, as I said, Plavix FDA or, or Plavix PDF, which comes from the laboratory. They, they okay. Okay. All right. They have all the information, but just we don't look for it. And, okay. And second, I would adjust, I, I would suggest that um, you know be conscious about realizing that one pill doesn't fix everything. That we need to change habits along with the, if if a, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying you know if the patient needs a medication, yeah, they have to take the medication. But what are we doing to prevent it? What are we doing as a side treatment along with the medication so the symptoms uh, improve? Right. So, so for you, as, as a pharmacist, putting on your pharmacy hat, you would say you need to read all the literature that you're being given. And you also, also need to go to... Um, the name of the, whatever they print, Lexapro or Vyvanse, Cymbalta, whatever it is, and then FDA or PDF, or That's is it PDF, right? Yes, PDF, okay. D as in Paul, D as in David, F as in Frank. Okay, so yeah. not only are you reading what they're giving you, and read it, and I would read it before I put anything in my child's mouth, and yeah. then... And then you read on the internet too. And then you're fully informed. And if you still have a question, they can call you, the pharmacist and yeah. or the doctor. And then putting on your coaching hat, you would say, more importantly, it's important to dive in and look at what's the root cause of that? What are the factors? And that's where, as we know, as coaches, health and life coaching comes in. So the way that you parents can get a hold of um, Marlene and contact her, and she's actually going to give you a free consultation to talk about if, if her coaching would be a good fit for your teenager, health coaching and life coaching. So she can be found at, you can go to her website at www.marlenehlcoach.com. And I'll spell that to you for you. I'll also put it down in, in, the, the link so you can go ahead and contact her through her different social media but it's her name is it's m-a-r-l-e-n-e-h-l coach so marlene hl coach.com is her website and you can also again i'm going to leave everything for you so you can contact her directly thank you so much for being here today this has been wonderful. It's been so helpful. This is something that as a parent, again, that's, you know, had a daughter that had to be on medication previously. This is close to my heart. I know how important it is to be informed. I know how important it is to be uh, for preventative health. And also once you do have to take something to be able to ultimately, if you can, to get yourself off the prescription drugs. So thank you again so much for your time. I'm, I'm Thank just you so much for giving me the opportunity so to grateful. give this message to the people, especially young teenagers, you know, uh, teenagers and young adults who are my passion. They are the future of this country and in the future of the world. And we need to help them. Yes, we do. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye.